Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I am thrilled to bring you a new video on CKS, Certified Kubernetes Security Specialist. The CKS is hands down one of the toughest Kubernetes certifications out there, not just because of the challenging questions, but also due to the intense time constraints and the debugging skill it demand. Today, I'll be walking you through question number one and its solution to help you as this exam. But before that, I have been mentoring professionals for various certifications and my mentees are achieving great scores in their exams. Whether it's CKS, CKA, CKAD, KCNA, KCSA, AWS Cloud Practitioner or AWS DevOps Professional. Do you want to know the path to a good score? Then you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and drop me a message. I would love to guide you. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to share it with your friends who are preparing for any of these certifications. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Let's dive into the question number one. So here's the question number one. The task is to fix all issue via configuration and restart the affected components to ensure the new settings take effect. And we need to fix all of the following violations that were found against the kubelet. Okay. There will be issues related to kubelet and which are mentioned below we need to fix that and the cluster uses docker engine as its container runtime if needed we can use docker related command to troubleshoot containers and we need to ensure anonymous auth argument is set to false for kubelet and also we need to ensure the authorization mode argument is not set to always allow okay and use webhook authentication authorization wherever possible and we need to fix all the following violation that were found against etcd okay we need to ensure that client cert auth argument is set to true so this is all we have to do actually i'm not going to create or prepare the scenario from scratch what you can do is you can go to killer coda and you can just log in here you can log in with google or anything and here if you go to areas although areas is already open but yeah if just in case if not you can just click on areas and you will see all these areas for this the CKS certification is the required one in the CK series we were using this one and the other different one right so here we are interested in CK certification you can go here and if you scroll down you will find different setup okay like they will provide a predefined scenario so here in our case it is related to cis benchmark fix so this is the scenario we can select cis benchmark fix control plane okay if you click on it it will open a terminal for you and it will prepare the scenario for you this scenario here on killer coda is not exactly same as that of mentioned in the question but yeah like uh, you can have a general idea here okay so we are here on the control plane so the very first thing that we need to do is we need to check if all process are running or not so you can just see CRI CTL PS command and it will list down all the components okay so we can see like many components almost all components are running there are no component which are in error state so you can see kube API server is also running uh, let's check kubelet PS aux grab kubelet kubelet is also running here many things are running so it's not really issue here Actually, the scenario is from killer.sh. It has different things mentioned here, like to see if there are anything breaking with PSI benchmark. So you can run this command and it will show like what all things that are failing. For example, ensure profiling argument is set to false. Okay, so you can check it like this. But right now, our scenario is not to handle this one, but to handle the question that we have discussed. Okay, so coming back to the question, we need to fix first the kubelet. Okay, so kubelet configuration file is present at this path. Let me clear the screen. So the kubelet config yml is present at slash where slash lib slash kubelet config dot yml. Okay, we need to edit this one. So in this where lib kubelet config yml, we need to find the anonymous section and if it is set to true we need to set it to false that's the first thing we need to do so let's see if anonymous so see here the very first thing it is set to false so if it is true you need to edit this and set it to false this thing is done now 
we need to do authorization mode and we need to set it to webhook so we need to go to here authorization part and the mode should be set to webhook this is what we need to do okay so it is already set here so we have done the webhook part for this one instead of always allow we have set it to webhook there is one mention also like to use authorization or authentication wherever possible so we will check this in cube api server file as well but for now like we have done it for kubelet now all we need to do is just save this file and exit and we need to restart kubelet remember kubelet is not a static object so it will not be restarted automatically after making changes in this file so all you have to do is systemctl restart kubelet.service or simply kubelet okay and then we can again check if it is running fine or not using status command so as you can see it is running so we are done with this part now the next thing is we need to use webhook authentication authorization wherever possible this is present in etc q1 it is manifest and then cube api server.yml so here in the authorization mode we need to put instead of anything else whatever written okay we need to put here webhook and in the documentation you can just search for authorization here you can see the relevant documentation okay so here authorization mode we are using webhook and the values we can find here like always allow always deny abac rbac node and webhook okay so these are the values that we can fill in so based on this it should be webhook here okay so we are done with this let's save this and we can again check this with cri ctl ps if cube api server is running so it is running fine okay so we are done with this now we will finally ensure that client cert auth argument is set for hcd this is the next violation that we need to fix so let me clear the screen now we will again go back to the same etc kubernetes manifest and here we will have hcd yml we need to have client cert auth to true so you can see at this line it is already set to true for this environment okay so in exam this will not be set to true it will be false or it might be not set at all so all you have to do is just append this line or just set it to true okay once you have done this all you need to do is save and exit and this is going to automatically restart the hcd okay and changes will take effect so with this we have solved the very first question if you have any doubts feel free to ask me in comments or you can also reach out to me on linkedin